Listening to When Christians Speak Online Talk Radio, broadcasting out of the Washington, D.C. metropolitan area. Today's voice crying out in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. When Christians Speak is dedicated to lifting up the name of Christ Jesus and spreading the good news. Join us for our weekly broadcast, His Abounding Grace with Minister Vanessa Williams. That's every Tuesday at 7 p.m. On Wednesday afternoons at 1 p.m., join Reverend Gwendolyn Dixon for the Midday Glory Prayer Line. The dial-in number is 641-715-3580. The access code is 732-499. And Wednesday nights at 7 p.m., Challenge to Change, where real transformation begins with you. That's with Pastor Paul Morgan of Chosen Generation Ministries in Richmond, Virginia. On Thursdays, live at 12 noon, join Reverend Pat Randall for Declaring the Finished Work for an hour of worship, exhortation, and prayer. Reverend Ray and friends are here on Friday nights at 7 p.m. with the joy of the Lord on Friday Night Joy. Sundays at 7 p.m., join Reverend Ray for Bread of Life for a word in season. And don't forget our monthly broadcast. First Mondays of every month at 7 p.m., be blessed with the teaching ministry of Apostle Shirley Jones on Lifeline. On third Mondays at 7 p.m., join Evangelist Louis McElwain for Adoration, a broadcast of worship and ministries on the mission field. Second Saturdays of the month, join Reverend Curtis, Reverend Novena, and Minister Jordana for Bold and Beautiful, a youth and young adult broadcast setting the world on fire with the love of Jesus. And on fourth Saturdays, Alabaster Box at 7 p.m. with Prophetess Carla Johnson, where she shares a broad range of topics to help believers persevere and overcome. All broadcast times are Eastern Standard Time. Hey family, we've got a new show joining the When Christian Speak Talk Radio family. It's called Marriage Takeover, The Body of One. It's hosted by Reverend Eric and Reverend Tamika Thompson. It airs every third Sunday of the month at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You will want to join this exciting broadcast as they bring on other married couples, as they talk about a wide variety of topics. A lot of things that you won't hear being covered in our church. So come and join them on every third Sunday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's Marriage Takeover, The Body of One, hosted by Reverend Eric and Reverend Tamika Thompson. When Christian Speak Talk Radio is a non-profit ministry, we are dedicated to spreading the gospel of Jesus through our programs and special guests. We exist through the generous support of our listeners. 
If you are being blessed through this ministry and would like to give a love offering, go to our website and click on our donation page. Your donation will be processed through PayPal. Our prayer is that you may prosper and be in good health even as your soul As a 501c3 nonprofit ministry, all of your gifts are tax deductible. So go out to our website, www.whenchristianspeak.com. God bless you. Praise the Lord and welcome to another hour of Declaring the Finished Work. This is your host, Pastor Pat Randall, and I am here today with a co-host. Um, I almost called you uh, Reverend uh, Ray Duggar, uh, <laughs> Minister Duggar. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hey. Glory to God. Uh, oh. This young man is joining me. Uh, you want to say hello? Yes, absolutely. Hello, everyone. God bless you. This is Raynard Duggar. Glad to have you all here today. Thank you for having me also. Amen. Amen. So uh, before we get started, um, son, I'd like for you to um, just set the atmosphere with prayer, and then we're going to jump into our topic for the day. Amen. Father God, I just thank you for this this great experience, this great time, this fellowship via phone, via Facebook, whatever it is that people may be using as their outlet to reach this broadcast. God, I just thank you that there's no limits, there's no bounds, there's no hedges that can keep you out. There's, Lord God, no sin, Lord God, no no insecurities, Lord God, no, Father God, distractions that can stop this moment from taking place where we're coming to sit at your feet and receive from you. God, I thank you. Hallelujah, Lord God, that your anointing is upon us today. I thank you, God, in Jesus' name, Father, that your word has already went forth. And as our hearts are ready to receive, Lord God, I'm just so excited to be able to know what it is that you have for us, to show us how to break through, to show us how to get past, to show us how to get over, Lord God, to show us how to make our way around situations and circumstances and things that try to drain our energy, drain, Lord God, our our peace, that try to steal our joy so that we can focus on you, Lord God, and be empowered, Lord God, to make a difference and to be the difference, Lord God. So I just praise your name. Thank you, Lord God, for binding everything that that attacks, everything that would try to disrupt. I thank you for binding, Lord God, in Jesus' name, thing, Lord God, that would try to cause harm to this moment, to this atmosphere. Have your way. We love you because you first loved us, and we appreciate your hand in this. We give your name the glory, the praise, and honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen. Praise God. So, if you've been following uh, this particular series, Mind Renewal, amen, well, you'll know that we are now on part five. And for those of you who've missed uh, the other four episodes, I suggest that either you go back out to Facebook, find the link for for that particular message, or go to our website, um, whenchristianspeak.com, and you'll find our messages out there. Or you can go to iTunes. uh, The podcasts are there. All of our podcasts are out there. Or um, you can listen by downloading our app to your smart devices. Amen. Amen. So here we are, Mind Renewal Part 5. And so we're going to talk a little bit about walk by the Spirit because that's a very important part of this life that we live in Christ. I'm going to start off, uh, Ray, by reading the scripture that actually started, uh, that gave the uh, inspiration for uh, following this topic of mind renewal, and it's coming out of Romans 12, and it's verse 2. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may prove 
what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. And that word renew, it means Mm -hmm. to resume an activity after an interruption or to return to or to take up again or to come back to or to begin wow. again, to start again, restart. It also mm. means to reestablish. It can be reestablishing a relationship or, or a thought process. Uh, it also means to repeat uh, or reaffirm, reassert, mm-hmm. and transform, uh, which uh, the Greek word, which is where we got metamorphosis from, it just uh-huh. means to change one's outer form as a result of an inner change. Uh-huh. And, uh, and, I, and I think that basically sums up um, what needs to happen. It, it has to begin on the inside before we can see anything on the outside begin to change, whether it is our, um, our, how we think, our emotions, or even our physical changes start from inside, inside, how, how we're thinking, what our internal thought life is, is like. And that's the process that keeps us from conforming to the world. Mm-hmm. Because we're we're getting we're getting our thought life from the kingdom of God, and the kingdom of God is within. Amen. Did you want to jump in at this moment before I move on yes. to um, a little short review? Uh, yeah, yeah. Just real quick because <laughs> it's just so it, it it just blesses me because like no lie, I just have to be really honest. It really blesses me because I had a lot. Uh, struggle when it came to the mind, uh, learning that everything that I can possibly do, move forward in it, and have starts with the way I think about it, you know, the way I believe in my mind and what I tell myself or what I receive from the atmosphere. So it just really blesses me to know that there's a solution for the things that I feel I can't change, the thoughts that I think you know, because when you think something, you 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 basically believe it. So it's a blessing to know that God has allowed us to have power and authority over the things that we feel like we have no control over. But God says that we actually do have control over it. We can't control our thoughts and our minds. So that's just such a blessing to know that. And I'm so excited to continue this this conversation and go on this journey to see how we can even grow even further in it. Amen. Amen. And um, also, I've been uh, sharing, not just from the scriptures, but from a book that I was led by um, the Spirit of the Lord to pick up and read. And it was written by a Christian, a Christian woman who is, um, her her career has been in the area of new, neuroscience, which is the, the study of the brain. And right. uh, she's been in that, that particular field since, um, I guess, 1985, I believe. I'm going to just read a little bit off the back of her uh, book. So if you, I, I would suggest there's a lot of technical, scientific stuff in here but there is also a lot of practical stuff that connect, that that she connects you to the scripture. But if you like science, you will really love this because it's so amazing how God has n- not just who we are spiritually, but physically how he has designed us. You know, when, when David says that we are fearfully and wonderfully made, when you start to mm-hmm. study the design of this body, and you begin to uh, see how how amazing uh, and how everything works together in all these different systems. I mean, it's just it's like a whole universe, you know. Yeah. But anyway, let let me just read this right quick off the back of her book. 
Mm-hmm. It says, you are not a victim of your biology. What we think about truly affects us both physically and emotionally. Today, mm-hmm. our culture is undergoing an epidemic of toxic thoughts that, left unchecked, create ideal conditions for illnesses. And it's not just physical illness. We talk about mental illness. You know, when you right, hear... Right. Uh, about people, because just the other day, uh, I think uh, the woman who designed uh, the bags, Kate Spade, who designed, uh, she created the uh, those designer bags, well, she committed suicide, and she was having uh, mental health issues, and uh, I mean, in the news, in the news, we, we, we basically hear about famous people who commit suicide. But there is a lot yeah. of mental health issues that are going on uh, with with people of all ages, and yeah. um, and, and in fact, among our young people, there seems to be a higher rate because I think the enemy is just trying to destroy that next generation. Right. So our minds are important. Our minds are very important. Yeah. And um. Uh, if 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 your mind is blinded and the thoughts you're thinking are distorted, it can lead you down a path where you can't even hear God's voice. Mhm. And 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 you get to a place where you think the only solution to because what people are trying to do is escape from the negative thinking. And the only way yeah. they can escape from the depression and the anxiety they feel is to just end their lives. Yeah. But God is saying that no, we have the ability, the devil wants us to believe that we can't control our thinking. Or that we have to have medication. That's what he wants us to think. But God has designed us to be able to come back from I don't care what kind of mental illness you may be going through, whether it's even created by um, uh, an, an imbalance in physical hormones or things like that. God has designed you to come back from all all of that. He has given us a spirit of power, a spirit of power. He has given us himself, which is power, which is love, and which is um, a a sound mind. And, you know, one of the things that inspired me in, in my own personal testimony, Ray, is when my husband, uh, okay. He came suddenly ill, and yeah. uh, I was like not 39 years old when this happened. So I was basically really young, going through an extreme situation. And uh, we, at this point, we had been together for uh, married for like 17 years, and oh, wow. I, um, yeah, yeah, and so. It was actually a a viral attack, and we thought it was the flu, but as it started to move through his system, uh, and which was rather rapidly because he ended up in a coma, uh, and and the virus wasn't responding to any of the antibodies. And so uh, when he finally became sort of semi-conscious, well, you know, the doctors, well, they felt he, there was nothing there. They they mm-hmm. felt as though because the the virus had had burned up the the brain stem, and that's the part mm-hmm. from the brain that sends out the signals. You know, it connects to the spinal cord and it sends out all the signals. You know, to the mm-hmm. rest of your body, and so that was gone. So they were saying, oh, no, there's no way that he's going to come back out of this and da-da-da-da, right? But Mm -hmm. he was paralyzed, but he could still communicate and understand. And uh, and for when I 
and, and so when I was trying to tell them that no, he's no, he's aware. Oh no, 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 it's not possible. And then the nurses had to also uh, um, l- let the doctors know, no, he is. And so it took them, you know. Finally, they they opened their minds up and they saw, but they they had no answer for it. But they saw that this man could communicate. So they would ask him questions and ask him to blink once for yes and twice for no. Mm-hmm. And he was responding. <laughs> so uh, yeah. they weren't they were to do physical therapy because they felt, what's the point? He's not coming back. You know, so, mm. but what that showed me was this consciousness is something that is outside of your physical body. Yeah. And sure which, is. Is, which is what this woman was sharing in, um, uh, in her, in her research and her dealing with uh, patients and things like that, that is the science behind it uh, and the, um, the spiritual part of it, you know, with the word of God. You know, life and death is in, in, in the power of your tongue and as a man mm-hmm. think is in his heart, you know, um, all of that. Okay, so I've just shared that. Is there something I think you should jump in before I move on to something um, else? Did you want to jump in? Yeah, here? sure. I was thinking about um, when you were saying how the consciousness is 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 there, and it has it's not really um, depicted upon the body. You know how the body is operating because the conscience is, you know, spirit, and your body is more physical and things. So I was thinking about like how a car operates. You know. Um, Let's say the car and the radio, you know, your radio. I was thinking how, okay, you uh-huh. get in the car, you turn the car all the way on, you turn the ignition, you turn the ignition, the car comes on, lights, everything come on, the radio comes on. Now, say you're just sitting parked and you still want to be able to listen to the radio with the car off, you can, you know, turn the car backwards, uh, turn the, the key backwards and turn the ignition off, but the car will still kick out music. And it'll kick out music until you finally open the door. And I was I was thinking about that when you was talking because I want to give that reference and just tie it into how we we operate. It's like our bodies are the vehicles for what's inside, you know, which is God's spirit, which is our conscience, which is our mind, right? You know, and everything that it mm-hmm. yeah, and everything that it entails. So it's like okay, we're moving, we're living. Like we're our ignitions are turned and everything is functioning, but don't think that if any given chance, if somehow our ignition is turned off or our body stops somehow, that we lose consciousness. <laughs> you know, because right. even if something is dialed back in our body, our consciousness is still alert. <laughs> it's, it's going to yes. be still alert yes. until God opens that door and, and separates the soul from the body. You know, and that's on the day, you know what I'm saying, that you pass from death to life. So I was just give, I was just wanted to share that analogy, and it's just as simple as realizing that. Sam, you know that you can still enjoy your music, you know, in the car while it's off, as long as you turn it back, the same way you have to understand that while, while we're in our body. While we're in our body, it doesn't matter if, you know, the body's beat up, the body's getting old, it's going through sickness, disease, whatever the case may be. You still have a mind to believe, you know, you still can be turned on. You still can enjoy the benefit of of what God has placed inside of you, and you can actually change your situation if you can, if we can just put mm-hmm. our mind on the promises of God. So I just thought that was a cool little comparison. Amen. Amen. Uh, I'm going to just, uh, just review a couple of points from um, of just – just highlight some points from over the last uh, four uh, segments we've done. And one of the things Mm -hmm. is is that the mind is always working. We think and we choose all day long. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I was thinking about that, I was thinking about God, how he, he never slumbers or sleeps. 
no. that's what he tells us about himself. So his mind is always, God's mind is always at work. And so he has yeah. designed um that our mind doesn't sleep or slumber. It is always at work. And uh, uh, science tells us, based on measurement, that our minds are even more active while we're asleep because it's doing all sorts of things. Okay. While we're physically resting, our minds are really busy uh, reviewing all the things that we've thought and chosen throughout the day and incorporating it into our subconscious. Wow. Right. Wow. But you know, yeah, 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 and I think that's so that's so that's so interesting. That's why we really need to, you know, when it says and when it tells us to awake those who mm-hmm. slumber, you know, mm-hmm. we need to it, to awake in terms of being aware, aware because our minds are always working whether we are aware of what we're thinking or not. But wow. we do have the ability to stay aware of what we're thinking. Yeah. That we're not so that we're not so lost in 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 in, in the world and and what's going on and you know that we're not checking our thought life. Okay, when yeah. I hear this news, what am I thinking? Or am I just allowing myself to uh, just go negative? Right? Mm. Yeah, so, that's and good. the other thing, yeah, and the other thing is, is that our mind shapes our brain. So science has discovered that our mind and our physical brain are two separate things. Our consciousness, our mm. mind or what shaped our brain. So whatever we're thinking starts to create certain types of pathways in our brain. Mm-hmm. Because our, then our, and then our brains send these signals to our physical body. Mm, that's powerful. It is powerful. So that's just like um, being told that uh, you know, you hear these uh, wonderful stories about people who were told that they would never walk again, but their mm-hmm. minds didn't accept them, and At now all. they're walking. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're walking because their minds did not accept that as reality for them. Mm. That's powerful. That is what, powerful. What? Yeah, my, I pose a question. Mm-hmm. So what? What? I, yes. I wonder, because it's for myself too. I wonder what makes us be so prompt to believe in the first thing that we think instead of challenging it. Why don't we use? Why don't we tend to challenge our thoughts? Why don't we believe that what we think is what it's supposed to be? Why don't we, you know, put up a challenge to the things that's in our mind? Right, and I think that is from the very beginning where man went wrong in the garden because Mm -hmm. it started off with his thought life. Because before they ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, they had to think something first. And the devil offered them, the devil offered them some thoughts that were actually contrary to God's thoughts. Right. And see, we've been on our way back from that moment because mm. that has gone that has gotten passed on through the generations. The other thing that they've discovered in science is that 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 kind of thought life ends up it produces like protein physical protein okay. and that protein can end up well it does end up in your DNA 
and it gets passed on to the next generation. So you have a child and encoded in that child's DNA is part of your consciousness. Now, that for me, that explained, like, my husband was not raised by his father. He didn't know who his father was until he was 18. And when he finally wow. met his father, and when I actually met his father, they had physical mannerisms. Other than looking like his father, there were certain physical mannerisms and, 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 and voice inflections and stuff. He wasn't raised by this guy. But there was characteristics Uh-oh. of his father that he had. It was carried through the DNA. Right? Yeah. Yes, yes. But right. The thing, right. But the but what Christ has done for us through his death, burial, and resurrection and having salvation come into the earth, we now have the ability to reverse all of that because the, mm-hmm. cause that's part of the sure truth. And, and so Christ has given us a new DNA, and our thinking unlocks the DNA that Christ has given us. So when we believe in his promises, we are unlocking that spiritual genetic makeup that he is placed yeah. on the inside of us. Mm. So, Dang, so your so thought true. becomes very important. Yeah, that's so true. It becomes wow. very it becomes very very important. Very important. Telling me and so, that we can the curse just by rethinking just by doing some rethinking. Yep. There you go. That's awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. Yes. So, yes. And science so is and and science is proving this. Uh huh. That's the amazing thing about because, it. Too. Yes, right, because they've been doing this research. You know, they do these research and they do these experiments and they have these uh, um, uh, this equipment that monitors brain waves and activities and things like that. Because one of the things they discovered, because, you know, um, when we're thinking, we're giving off electromagnetic waves, which uh, uh, digital equipment, you know, our cell phones and TVs, it, it, it's electromagnetic waves. And mm-hmm. um, science says that the amount of electromagnetic waves that one human gives off in one day is more than all the electronic, electromagnetic, electromagnetic waves that are being given off by all the cellular devices in the world. Wow. Now, that's a lot of power. So that means that if we can, if we give off that kind of, you know what we can do? There's to be no limit. There's no, there is no limit. See, that's the reality that we have to get to, that there is no limit. Yeah. There is no limit. There is there is no limit. There's no limits in God. Oh, and you know what the, just came to my mind? Go ahead. What? What just came to my mind, Pastor Pat, was that I I believe now one of the things that hinders us is we all dang, it just hit me, we to have the element of I know it sounds so simple what I'm about to say. But it's true. We have to have this element of faith match with what we're thinking. Mm-hmm. And I think that's why we fail, too, mm-hmm. because we don't we don't match we don't connect faith with what we believe or what we're thinking. But because if right. you can believe it in your heart, if you can think a thing and believe that it is, you're gonna have it. And then guess what? Change our mind. 
<laughs> That's right. Yeah. That's right. A lot of us have been started and- put in our minds, put in our hearts, but then in a split second, once we let another thought creep in and we changed our minds. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Because once, once, it's just like when God gives you a vision for something, you can expect that stuff is going to come at you to challenge, to challenge that thought, to challenge your belief in what God has spoken over your life. Immediately, the challenge comes. That's the spiritual warfare. Yeah. Let me read this scripture, which I love. Uh, it's out of the uh, Message Bible, and I, I just love the way it reads in the Message Bible. Okay. Okay. Let's see. Well, keep talking while I, I find it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, please, I was thinking I was, Keep talking while you know I, I'm looking for it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was saying, you know, I said, well, okay, if I have a – if I if I tell myself something, I say, you know what, <laughs> I I know that I can do this. Situation will come and challenge it, and then instead of standing on what I first had thought about, I change my mind. And then once that happens, I don't void I don't void what it is that I can do, but I, I convince myself I convince myself of something that's not true. And it's going to be even that much harder for me to begin to pull pull it back to reverse it, because once I connect myself and then I to what I believe is true, it, it's hard to come out from that. It, it's hard to come out from right. when someone has a strong conviction about something. That's why when you have that thought in your mind, it's by God for you to have for whatever situation you in. Right. And, and the other thing uh, uh, science has shown is that, like, when the thought comes, like, you have a certain amount of, of seconds to pull that thing down, to pull that thought down and, pu- and bring it into submission, to take, take captive and bring it and make it obey Christ. Otherwise, it starts to, to, to take root like a seed that's been planted. And if it gets deep enough, then it gets into the the unconscious part of your mind. Or right? And then you you you're on autopilot. And you may have forgotten about that negative thought that you embraced but it's been planted and you're still responding to something that was planted. It could have been planted years ago and you're still responding to it. But I'm going to read something out of the science book after I read this, this scripture. Second Corinthians says, uh, and this is out of the message in chapter 10, and I'm going to start in verse three. The world is unprincipled. It's dog eat dog out there. The world doesn't fight fair, but we don't live or fight our battles that way, never have and never will. The tools of our trade aren't for marketing or manipulation, but they are for demolishing that entire massively corrupt culture. We use our powerful God tools for smashing warped, philosophies, tearing down barriers erected against the truth of God, fitting every loose thought and emotion and impulse into the structure of life shaped by Christ. Our tools are ready at hand for clearing the ground of every obstruction and building lives of obedience into maturity. Is that good? I may have lost connection, so I'm going to wait till um, uh, you may need to dial back in. Amen. Hello? 
Can you hear me? Okay, yes, yes. Did you did you did you hear everything that I just read? Yes, out the message as a message did, version, right? Yes, yes. Okay. I oh, you yeah, know, I, I wasn't everything. sure. Uh you were disconnected by accident. I mean, well, um it was muted by accident. I don't even understand how that could have happened. So no, I heard uh, everything though. See. You read it from the message version. That was really it was it broke it down really good. Isn't that something? Mm-hmm. I'm like Lord, Lord Jesus. Yeah, I like how it said, "Never have and never will." Have and never will. Mm-hmm. Never have and never will. Yeah. So I'm gonna I'm gonna read this little segment out of um, "Switch on Your Brain" uh, by Dr. Carolyn Leaf. Mm-hmm. It says, "Freeing yourself from burdens." Getting your thoughts disciplined and under control is one of the first steps in freeing yourself of the burdens of the world and beginning to enjoy life despite the burdens of the world. Yeah. When you objectively observe your own thinking with the view to capturing rogue, I like the way she calls them rogue thoughts, you in effect (laughs) direct your attention to stop the negative impact and rewire healthy new circuits in your brain. Yeah. Every time you capture a negative thought and replace it with the word of God, mm-hmm. you are rewiring your brain. Mm. Because you know we're also we're also creatures of 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 habits and so we can just go into this mode where we just just you know we just move through without even thinking you know we develop these patterns of 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 thought and we just move through life and we do certain things a certain way and we just you know yeah 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 but this morning when I woke up I was, you know, sometimes I just lie in the bed and I'll pray in the spirit for a while and, you know, have my little conversations with God while I'm lying there. And this morning, he was talking to me about watching thoughts that actually act to, to to separate me from him. Because... In reality, we are never separated from him. He has told us that. Right, right, he right. never leaves us. He never forsakes us. And and when you're saved, he has placed himself in you, so you are always connected uh, to him. That's our reality. But our thought life can tell us something else. If we're thinking thoughts yeah, that, separate, mm-hmm. that separate us from God. Mm-hmm. And fear is the greatest separation because he tells us that he didn't give us a spirit of fear. So if he didn't give us a spirit of fear, it's clear where it comes from. And this fear says that I'm separate from God. That's what fear does. It says that I'm separate from God. Yeah. So you get scared about something. Mm-hmm. Oh, this don't happen, and what is this happening? What the, you know? Because now you're thinking separation from God. Wow! But He so tells fear, us so to abide. Uh huh. Go so ahead. So would you say fear stops us from um from actually knowing what's true? Because why you why you afraid? Why you afraid? I guess we'll be too caught up in our feelings that we won't even be able to know what's true. Mm -hmm. Because fear is actually something physical. Fear isn't physical. I can be afraid of something that I really have no need to be afraid of, you know. That's right. It appears that way. And the way that 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 it's, the way that I'm responding to it is because of what I'm thinking about it. So if I'm thinking about something that's not even really what it what is what I'm I'm thinking it is, then that means it's it's gonna be like again, like we said earlier, it's gonna be hard for me to be able to stand on what's really true. 
And like you said, now it's a, it's fear too. Fear will be it will strip you from the truth. It will. It will. And 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 fear gives birth to worry, anxiety, depression. It gives birth to shame, guilt, blame, judgment. You know, because that's the first thing that hit Adam and Eve when God came into the garden looking for them. They were afraid, and they hid. Wow. Mm. And then everything proliferated out of that. They were feeling, the, then they start feeling the shame. Then they start judging one and blaming one another, and all of that was birthed out of that spirit of fear. Wow. Because when we think separate. When we think from God, it makes us, it exposes us to that spirit of fear. Yes. I can see that. Our our safety is to stay in him. He is our refuge. He is our fortress. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to read the the piece that I sent you today, which I just think is... uh, Phenomenal! Out of the, um, I'm going yeah, back really to the is. book again. Yeah, uh, yeah mm-hmm. it's it, 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 it's it's like, I was just like, what? <laughs> okay, so in the book, uh, switch on the brain. Scientifically, they have this thought moves faster than the speed of light. Okay, <laughs> electrons mm. have been observed to jump from one orbit to another without traveling mm. through the intervening space and without time having elapsed. Mm-mm-mm. So, you know, then, you know, when you, you you read the stories about Philip and the, um, um, the, um, yeah. was it, <laughs> Munich? In the desert, mm-hmm. how he appeared and then disappeared, how Jesus, you know, he was in the middle of the crowd and they're getting ready to turn on him and he just vanishes. Yeah. I mean, it's amazing. But see, Jesus, Jesus had full control over electrons and atoms and neurons. Mm-hmm. And you know what I'm saying? Sure enough, Yeah. <laughs> Mm. Wow. And he says and he says that we are like him. Mm. That makes me excited. We are like him. That makes me so excited. Isn't that something? That really is. So then yeah, so that's why he says, you know, go out to the world, preach the gospel, heal the sick, cast out demons, you know, you're, you're like me. <laughs> yeah, he said, you're like me, do it, right. <laughs> it's, yeah, you're you're like me. And the devil, he wants to say, no, you're not, you're not like him. Look at this, mm. look at this, look at this right, you don't do that right. Well, see, that's the thing, right, the right, other thing that right. God. God, God, God was, she said to me, he says, um, you know, my confidence should not come from what I do or don't do. Exactly. My confidence has to come directly from him. It, my confidence yeah. has to be in him, not in myself, but in him. That's where he's placed me, in him. Yeah. That's amazing. Because if we spend too much time looking at, well, you know, if I had to done this and if I had to done that, or you know, you know, you feel good when you you feel productive, and then when you don't feel like you've produced enough, you don't feel so good. You, you see what I'm saying? So that's that, you know, being talked to and fro right. and back and forth, and you know what I mean. And we need to stay yes, put. Mm-hmm. Just stay put. Just stay. Just stay. Yeah. Just stay. Just stay. And that What's comes so with hard? discipline. Why is it so hard to thought. do that? Because we've been told that it's hard, but it's not. 
Right, right. Yeah. That's another <laughs> thought. That's another thought. That's another thought. You know, you hear saints say, "Oh, it's just so hard. It's not. It's so hard." And I'm, t- I started telling myself, "No, it's not hard." That's what I'm right, telling right, right, myself. Right, right. No, it's not hard. No, it's not hard. I'm right. wired for this. I'm wired for victory. This is how I'm designed. Jesus did that. You know what I'm saying? Because there was a. The, I go back. I remember when I used to get tired. I used to get so frustrated with facing challenges. It seemed like, you know, you you yeah, go but, through one challenge, you and you get you overcome it. You know, and you feel like, oh, I'm in a good place now, and then something else comes. And then, I, and then I, I was at this point. I was like, well, when am I going to get a break? And, you know, I had that kind of thinking. When am I going to get a break? And it was not until I converted my thinking. And so now when the challenges come, you know, I'm ready. No, I'm not tired. No, I'm not weary. Because I'm a warrior. That's who mm-hmm. I am. I'm a warrior. I'm a warrior. Yeah. You know, so when stuff by comes, birth, you have to remind birth, yourself, too. wait a minute. I said it, by birth. What did you say? I'm a warrior by birth. When I was <laughs> birthed in Christ. Yeah. Yes. 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 Mm-hmm. Yes. You have to capture all those thoughts. See, those are thoughts that limit us. Oh, it's too hard, or it's this, and why am I this way, and why that? You know, those are things that limit us. That You think God has given you that thought? That it's so hard? That's not how God sees it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, ma'am, I sure do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know. I know. I'm working on this now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a long way to go too. Mhm. Yeah, but I mean, you know, when you think about how big God is, I mean, it's you know the never-ending right. story. It's a, exactly. <laughs> and it's not intimidating. It's, it's not something that we should story. be intimidated about either. Nope. Nope, don't even be intimidated yeah. by it. Yeah, don't even be, we can't be intimidated nope. or we shouldn't allow ourselves to be intimidated because God is with us and he perfects yes. us and he will perfect everything, like the Bible said, concerning us. So it's like, yes. I may feel challenged to believe something that feels good, I mean, that feels normal, seems like it is what it is. But if I just focus on God, he'll give me a word to tell me what he thinks about what I'm going through, and I and I know 100% it'll be contrary to what my flesh is telling me. And if God himself yes. is telling me what to think, I don't have to be intimidated by the results. Because some people feel like, well, if I think this, I don't, and, and, and if I and if I believe, I don't, I don't want it to turn the other way. And then I was believing for nothing. You know, they get intimidated by the results. Because there the circumstances are what bigger than them, happened? but it's not bigger than God. No, it's not bigger than God. It's it's right. not it's not bigger it's not bigger than God. And so yeah. he is asking us to be a vessel, to be a con- conduit. All we need to do is keep our minds right. Keep mm-hmm. our minds right and and he can work through us. Yeah. Yeah. The power, there, there'll be nothing blocking the flow of his power in our lives yeah. if we can mm-hmm. just keep our minds right. Yeah. Just keep our minds right. Mm-hmm. Transformation. Transformation comes from keeping our minds right, keeping our minds renewed. Mm-hmm. Amen. We have the mind of Christ. Yeah, I know some people. I may say, "Well, what it, what does that mean?" Like, I have the mind of Christ. Like, how if I'm not Him? But I hear a lot of people say, like, you know, some a lot of people say, "Well, that's Jesus. That's not me. Like, He can do that. I can't." That's that's how they talk. That's how I hear them talk about situations. 
Like, yeah, well, I know. That's I know. God. He's God. So, of course, he can do it, right. but I can't do that. Mm-hmm. Exactly. But, see, that that's the... Um, the rationale. It's just like, can you imagine if a baby, uh, uh, a toddler, he's trying to learn how to walk, and he stumbles right. and falls, and he says, well, walking is not for me, so I'm not going to try. <laughs> I'm not going to keep trying to right. walk. Right, you that's for you adults. That's not for me. Right. <laughs> that's not, yeah, that's for you, you older people. That's just, but that's not for me. I'm a toddler. I'm a baby, and I fall every right. time I try to walk. Right, <laughs> that's good. You know, that's and good. so it's kind of it's kind of a mindset, but that's how the enemy deceives us. He deceives us. I, you know, you hear a lot of that kind of talk because we 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 are looking for excuses for why mm-hmm. we aren't, why, why we fail, why we fail, or why we sin. We're looking for excuses, and and what we don't realize is just the way we're thinking. It's the way we're thinking. That was good. You know, we understand because of the way we're thinking. Yeah. There's a lot of things that I don't do that I used to do because I don't think like that anymore. Mm hmm. Okay, I used to get high. I used to go, yeah, I used to do all that stuff. I used to fornicate. But I don't think like that anymore. I have a different right. I have I have revelation. I have truth. I have truth now. And it has it has made me free. Cause see some people feel like they don't have no choice but to fornicate. That's just how it is. Yeah. What you want me to do? I feel this. <laughs> I feel that. I feel this. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. You know? But it's all it's all a lie, it's a deception. And mm-hmm. what happens when you hold on to those kind of lies, they block the truth. So when someone speaks the word of God to you, which is the truth, which says that you're more than a conqueror, you don't want to hear that because that lie comes no. up and it blocks that. Oh no, 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 I'm not Jesus. I'm I can't be God. I'm you know, I'm just me, I'm doing the best I can. Right, right, right. <laughs> and it blocks it. Blocks the truth. Mm. That's why they're Amen. there. They're there to block. Those kind of thoughts are there to block the truth. Yeah, and when we start getting in a warrior's mindset, we'll know that we have to fight. Sometimes we don't know we got to fight. But once we get in a, once That's we right. realize that we are warriors and that we were called to, you know, take territory. It's a battle. Conquer, and rain, and, and we right. call to face, a, face the enemy, yeah. we're going to know that one of his battlegrounds is our mind. Then we'll feel more confident to fight against ourselves, yes. our own thoughts, to fight against ourselves. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Exactly. Amen. To wage Amen. war against, against your Amen. own stinking thinking. Well, it's 1259 already. Oh my goodness! Yes, it is. So, and I do want us to uh, pray. There's some other thing. Let me tell you, there is so many things that um, since I've started on this journey of um, my renewal, and I know that I can't get it all in one broadcast. Praise the Lord that enough was shared today um, that will get people um, just. Just encourage them and know that they are far more than who they think they are. Yes, amen. And and not to not to allow their thoughts or even the thoughts of others to diminish who they are in Christ. Yeah. And that all the things that the Lord says about them in the scripture is true. It is Amen. true, and you have to war against that those lying thoughts that tell you that you're not, that you're not as Jesus is, so are you. Those, because that's what the word says. As he is, so am I 
in this world, not in the world to come, but in this one, in this world. Amen. Amen. Yeah. That I'm seated in heavenly places. I'm seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. I'm joint heirs with him. I have the mind of Christ. Mm -hmm. That my weapons, my weapons are powerful. They're spiritual, able to pull down any type of stronghold. Mm -hmm. Demolish, utterly destroy. So would you uh, pray for our listeners? Yes, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God, in Jesus' name for your dynamic, your dynamic word. I mean, dynamic because there's no, there's no end to it. There's no cutoff point. There's no, there's no limitations. There's no rounding off. Like, it's so dynamic. There's no, you know, pinpointing and saying that this is it. We can touch your word, turn it around, flip it inside out, go inside it, and, you know, we can still eat off of it from this moment, late on tonight, all through the week, next year. It would take us throughout the rest of our lives, God. Your word is that dynamic, and we appreciate your love for allowing us to be able to sit with you, fellowship with you, um, and just grind in your word to be able to get to the nitty-gritty of what we need and how we can truly be changed in our minds. So, God, you've given us a powerful tool to run the universe. You've given us power to rule the world, God. You said that we should, you know, take the world, rule it have authority over it, have dominion over it. But first we need to take back our mind, that which we handed over, that which we've given to the enemy, that which we allow circumstances to dictate to God. You've given us the authority in Jesus. When he died and rose again, he became the second man, Lord God. He was the last Adam, Lord God. So in him, all that we suffered and died, and now we can live again through him, and now we can have the mind that he has to think right. Be right, do right, because he's right, Lord God. And and we just thank you, Lord God. I pray for the listeners that was listening, God, that they would take hold and every thought that they hear or or, or, or it comes in their mind, that they would gauge it and they would line it up with what you said. And if it doesn't line up, that they would cast it down, bind it, Lord God, and cause it to be uh, ineffective and render it having no power. And that they would take authority over it, God, and say, you know what, I'm standing up for what I believe. I'm standing up for who God called me to be, and I'm standing up for my purpose in this life, to be a man, a woman, a child of God. I give you praise. I give you glory, God. I pray for this broadcast. I pray for Mama Pat and all that's involved, God. And I ask that you would just continue to give them favor and that you would bless them and that you would equip them to continue to reach more. So, God, I praise you. I give you the glory and honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Um, All right. Well, I, I didn't, love you. That was uh, right on time, too, because I got a, a prison ministry call on the other line. Amen. Well, praise God. Well, I'm going to – you hang up. I'm going to let you go, and I'm going to close out. But thank you okay. for, for being on the air. I love you, and go and take the other call. Praise God. Amen. Love you, guys. All right. Bye. Praise the Lord. Well, I just want to thank you for listening to this podcast live, well, listening to the broadcast live, and thank you for listening to the podcast later. This podcast is available, so you can take it up and listen to it anytime. You can download it from iTunes. Um, You can go to our website, whenchristianspeak.com, and listen to it again or on our Facebook page. Uh, Just click on the link there and listen to it from there. Praise God. And um, the young man that joined me today, um, Raynard Duggar, that I I affectionately call Ray, uh, he is a hip hop hop artist, a gospel hip hop artist and he's a lyricist. And so go go out to his Facebook page, check him out. Uh, that's Ray Dugga, R A Y D U G G A. And um 
listen to uh, some of his his uh, music. It's it's powerful. The lyrics are, are, are powerful. Praise God. So God bless you. Um, as you move through the rest of your day, just keep your mind stayed on him. You can do that even while you're going through your work day. Your mind can be stayed on him. Just knowing that he's present, that his his spirit is there with you, his power is there, and most importantly, his perfect love is there. Perfect love casts out all fear. You don't have to fear judgment. I just let me just I, I just want to pray one more thing before uh, I I hang up. Lord God, I just thank you. I thank you for this hour. I thank you, Lord God, that your word is spirit and it is life. That even through these airways that it is moving forth and it's touching the listener. Causing them to have a hearing heart, to to hear this truth and embrace it and say yes and amen. Not only do I pray for the healing of the mind and the emotions, I pray for the healing of the physical body, Lord God. Understanding that life and death is in the power of the tongue, that we can rewire our brains to send out healthy signals to the different parts of our body, to our heart to our kidneys, our liver, our pancreas, our digestive system, our breathing system, our veins and arteries, our nerve, our nervous system, our lymph node system, Lord God, that immune system. Father, I thank you. I thank you. You are Rafa, our healer. And by your stripes, we are healed. I thank you for this in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. God bless you all. Have a great rest of the afternoon. Don't forget Reverend Ray is on tomorrow night at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with Friday Night Joy. Glory to God. And also on Saturday, we've got our youth and young adult um, ministry um, that is on air, bold and beautiful. They have a special guest on um, that will be joining them and sharing um, uh, what her process looks like as she journeys through this. And so she'll be sharing her uh, personal uh, testimony. Praise God. Let me see. Let me pull up this promo, and uh, I can tell you um, – who the young lady, uh, her name is uh, Taniqua Lee, and that broadcast is this Saturday at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, 9 a.m. Central Standard Time. And so this young lady is a survivor. Of, she's a motivational speaker, a mother, and so she's going to give you a glimpse at walking in her shoes and what process has looked like in, in her life. So praise God. And also on Sunday, Bread of Life at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So God bless you. Amen and hallelujah. God is, he is a good God. Amen. God bless you.
say yes to 